What is up, YouTube? And welcome back to another episode of RimWorld Episode 8. Uh, Tesla's looking at the upgrades. SCAD's at the minute. You can see there at the bottom, SCAD. It's lit up when it's there. It is grayed out when it's not. SCAD adds a shield to it. Excel on the left-hand side. SCAD HP is 100%. It uses energy to give it a bit of a shield so that it doesn't take damage immediately. And you can see the obelisks there as well. Also scattered up with a beam splitter. The beam splitter does not what I thought it did. Otherwise, I wouldn't have rushed it. The beam splitter basically damages the shield. So anybody coming in with a shield, it breaks the shield immediately and then fires a laser beam at them so that they take damage. So anybody wearing a shield is still damaged. All of the upgrades have to be researched one by one. They're pretty easy to do. Especially if you've got an army of researchers like I do. And then they require a little bit of plasteel and steel in order to do it. Now the kill box, as you can see, I've got some standard crappy turrets on the left hand and right hand side. They are rubbish, as I've already said, though they're specifically they are for just attracting attention. So that as a wave comes in, they will be shooting at those turrets instead of the things that are actually doing the damage, like the obelisks, Teslas, and people. Just going around trying to gather up as much of this steel scrap metal as possible to give us some more steel. We do have a good amount, 12.5k at the minute, and that's because we're processing it. But you can always have more. And again, I like the map to be as clean as possible. All of the stone chunks, slag chunks, metal chunks, mechanoids, and the mountains that are outside, certainly the mountains or uh, along the bottom of the of the map, will be eventually gone. Uh, I will dig them up. It also makes it easier to attack raids and less lag on the game. Now, you can see I've got some turrets around that miner, auto miner. It's, it's not very good, so that's why I've not really talked about it much. It's just given us loads of stone chunks the reason the turrets are there though is in case it, in case you get an event called too deep uh, it, in, you get an infestation there so that just helps prevent that from happening also pex and Boca being the spiritual leader and leader of the colony require additional so you can see i've upgraded their bedrooms there one with gold one with emerald what is it can't remember um yeah the green stuff the gold one's technically better but there wasn't enough to do both in gold, so that's why I did it that way around. Joanne Wood Booker there. Get up to some mischief. Uh, not doing anything of any use at the minute. Probably going to draw some pictures. They go around and draw random pictures, and that increases their stats as they grow. The next stage of growth should allow uh, you to actually be a member of the group and use weapons, etc. Hospital has been upgraded there with the life monitors. So that is, I think, the hospital done now. I don't believe there's any upgrades for it. Again, the walls and doors could be changed to silver, but it, without the actual silver walls mod, it don't really do anything. The temperature map, we do have um, many, many, <laughs> many, many coolers. For, we've had a lot of heat waves, is why. This one obviously needs extras. And then that room that's there that looks pointless is to stop the guys coming in when they raid and destroying the coolers because they're not technically in sight so they won't the moats then in this now these are what i mentioned earlier and they set up actually wrong the the fact that the moats are larger than one single tile isn't actually a benefit at all so what you basically want to do is do a moat one tile and then a gap and then a tile a moat with one tile and then a one tile gap over and over and over that is how you drastically slow down any incoming tax you can put a barbed wire in the gap between but i did a bit of testing i'm not sure if i recorded it and if i did i will show it but i don't know if i recorded it or not but i did a bit of testing and actually and i don't know why but they move faster through the moats if there is barbed wire in between so I use barbed wire for pathing, single file, as you can see there at the braziers, and then some traps for the gap, because of course they're going to try and get through that gap. They have to, to attack my people, so traps around. 
as a last last resort and then the rest of the soil is packed soil so it is soil but it's packed so that nothing can grow and although it doesn't matter massively um, uh, growing trees are classed as cover that the enemy could use and then them green turrets, I'm not sure if I've mentioned those. I don't believe I have. They are sniper turrets. They are about the only useful turrets that I've found that do anything. They have extremely good range. And although their uh, attack speed is reasonably slow, they are quite accurate. And they're just an additional to... Even if they hit the odd person and slow them down a little bit, it's all beneficial to me. While we wait for the obelisks and the testers to be upgraded... Uh, both upgraded and then every time they get a kill they of course get slightly better uh, and then uh, and then the actual colonists themselves getting better guns traps of course because why not the first level of trap is incendiary so that the guys get set on fire uh, that will put people off right if you're on fire so it works and then the second wave of traps is just ied which go boom and blow them up unfortunately if they do have shields and stuff though it doesn't really do anything because the shields Ignore all of that. Okay, so the drone cultivator is what I'm using at the top there. I'm going to put a few more down, so bring you along to show you. They're quite simple. They don't do a massive area. You can see it's just this small square. That is the maximum they will do. And the idea here is that this little part in the center um, is full of drones. I think it's two drones. So each of those squares holds two drones. It then creates a grow zone. You say what you want to grow there. And then them two drones fly out and do the planting, the cutting, etc. None of the goods will be taken away, of course. But then again, the gardening bots I had previously didn't either. So all it will do is maintain that very small square. And that is it. Now below it, of course, I am going to put the tilled soil. Because that gives a 200% growth increase rate. Which, well, is twice as quick, right? Uh, the fertilized ground that's down there already is 150% I believe it is so it's still better just to go straight over it and the areas where there isn't any soil it won't work where you saw and I'll just convert that using the convert soil tool once that's done I'll be able to till it up so tilled soil then set them up to be automated and I can set each square to be something specific and leave it alone and I will just get many many resources coming in Still looking around the map at the steel chunks that are available to us. Uh, 15k now and climbing in terms of steel chunks. But we need more because we want to replace walls and do various other things. And steel will become very needed very soon. However, wave 43 is up on us. And that's terrifying. I saw rocket launches there and even a doomsday. So we can get the mortars immediately. They are on standby, as you can see. Yes, there is. Yes, there's a doomsday. Now remember, wait for them to stop before firing. So I've got all six of my mortars ready to go. Until I press U or click on hold fire, it's ticked, which means they will hold fire. Wait and they will settle. If you click on them and it shows that they're going to attack something, that means that they're coming straight in. If not, they're going to settle. They settle to a beautiful little circle like so. And then tell it to not hold fire and off it goes. Taking out 19 of the group there of the 186. And then of course the auto mortars will need to reset. It takes 30 seconds and then they will fire again. Each auto mortar holds 22 shells. So if you're building them and thinking that you haven't got enough shells, that is why the auto mortars have an internal storage. And each one is, I think it's 22, it might be 21. But yeah, 22 shells per. So we've got six. So obviously 132 shells required just to fill those six mortars. And then if you want some extras, then on a shelf or something, you'll need to do that. The best thing I've done, though, is just told it to make X amount of shells. Ten. The ones inside the mortars don't count. So it'll just keep going until there's then ten extras. And there's a shelf there to the left-hand side that's got what looks like 20 or so spare anyway so that's good plenty of mortar shells we have um that was a decent that is a good hit there we go they immediately got wrecked into retreating and that is a perfect example and a legendary reward of how you can mitigate an entire attack with mortars 
So they will all now leave. Everybody that died and all of the goods and that will still be left behind. But those are going to limp off and think about it. And yes, that was my zooming of excitement. Showing that it is possible, indeed, to win a battle without even fighting the battle, though, technically, the mortar is. But that's why mortars are important. Even if there was two groups and it wipes out one, you want to try and get them down as much as possible. Yes, you could say no mortars, but we never said that for this playthrough, so it's fine and I like to do it. Wave 45 incoming in five days, which is a boss wave. Resetting all of the drones now to get back to work. We've got a lot of tilling to do on the fields and four, actually no, one's already built, three of the cultivators to build as well. Second turbine being built with an additional power output. That is because the amount of steam that's being created by our generator is more than one turbine can handle. So the turbine was spinning at 100%, which means it's capped. Uh, so building two turbines will allow for even more power to be generated. And as long as you don't overheat it, it will be fine. I will say that if you use the tower like I am using, it is very forgiving. Um, one of them can easily run two nuclear fully kitted, fully powered uh, reactors. So yeah, one of them can do two. So if you build one, you're happy, but... Even better, build two, and then you're laughing throughout the game, really. And this is all because we need a massive amount of additional power. So as soon as the PPCs, the Rimatronics batteries, are drained, they are immediately getting shocked full of electricity for the next wave. Um, it's not so bad with a four- or five-day gap, of course, but that will reduce as we progress. And, of course... That means that then we're going to be having to fully charge, fully depleted batteries in maybe two days. Which ain't going to happen without a few nuclear reactors in play. I will of course put a floor down. Nothing fancy, but it just looks nicer. Make sure it's roofed as well because they need to be roofed. Um, you can see the plywood there in the back room. That's a room that I've done and then just thought I don't know what to do with it. I could probably do with chucking a load more PPCs in there. More batteries, but we will need a lot more uh, resources for that though as it stands we have 4,000 um, components but scratch that we're into the reactor and you can see there that uh, the power is capped out the cooling is nowhere near it's 50% and the fan speed is now about 70% so it just shows you the colors there red showing the heat and of course they will slowly drain down as they drain down as nuclear fuel fuel rods they will create plutonium and that is of course what we then do to crack and upgrade to the better ones in the future it is set to 100 percent 74,000 watts was the excess obviously bringing that down now what we're going to do is use the auto tune so up to the left of that you can see the at box this is to save resources really if you don't if you're not using rimatronics which we are, so this isn't going to actually be that useful. But if you get the grid access to be up to, or less than, 5,000 watts, you can then click that auto button and it will automatically keep it at that level. So as you add items power-wise power or, or use more uh, things, it will automatically turn up the power of the reactor to keep it at that level so that you're not just burning through fuel rods for the sake of it we want to do that though because we want that excessive amount of power to keep the rimatronics items running and we also want that because that's how you get plutonium which means we can make the mox fuel rods which are better there you can see the four fields are done with the four cultivators so we can set those up as well And I'm going to move into this giant room because it's a giant room that I'm not using. So I'm going to move all of the items up there and the storage for the armor and weapons just to keep it out of the way. We can use this room then for something else, but it just, again, like I said, keeps it out of the way. Joanne Wood now growing up. So we're going to make her first trait medical, I would probably guesstimate at. She also got a trait of hero, which means that she is not afraid to fight and i don't think she'll ever retreat that is quite an impressive stat to have it was added in to the, as a mod the i think there's the hero and superhero traits and there's also some god genes as well though i haven't actually seen any of them until now 
that one there being the first one for Joanne Wood. So well done you. Hopefully that means you will survive the season, but we shall see. Um, moving on, we can see we're just moving all of these up. It's exactly the same process. The bills are already set up on the machines, which is why moving them is definitely a better option than rebuilding them. We might have to put some more down as well. Basically, the reason I'm doing this is because I need more machines because the process is still taking too long and we're still not quite at the level where we can automate it yet. These are the trade beacons, so just in case we get any traders come in, we can sell off the crap. I honestly don't care. You get like four silver for a piece of armor, maybe f two to ten silver for a weapon. But the reality is that whether I sell it for a couple of silver or whether I just trash it, I'm not interested in it. I want it out of the way. It's just a byproduct of giant raids, and that is basically what I'm trying to mitigate is having too much crap also it does it does add to the wealth therefore making everything harder so if you destroy it you're removing that from your wealth and making it easier of course if i sell it for a couple of silver that will technically still add to your wealth right but yeah there we go that is the new storage area at least twice the size of that room if not a little bit bigger um and then that room will be cleared out and we'll be good to use it for something else and it was at this message that I realized that everything kind of goes to crap. Also, if you notice, just below there, you can see 120 um, of the barrels for mortars. That means we can make a lot more mortars in the future if we need it. I bought them from a trader, along with that prestige armor as well. But anyway, the gold cube that is part of the anomaly thing um, it is quite intense. Now, it's not actually been a thing up until now because I haven't got into it properly. But basically, it is a relic that is required. Now, there is probably a better way of doing it. And I don't know because, like I say, I like to do this myself. I don't like to watch other people and copy them. So I made the gold cube available to anyone, really. But what happens is your people get obsessed. They get obsessed with the gold cube. And then they have to be able to see it on um, very, very frequent occasions. And that is one of the reasons why I can't actually go out and raid. Because I can't leave the map and leave the gold cube behind. Because the people leaving the map will have a breakdown and die. Uh, and I can't take it with me because the people left behind will have a breakdown and die. So, yeah, it's, it's a bit awkward. They also go batshit crazy about it and start building loads of totems to it all over the map. Now, as well as the, the fact that they annoy my, not OCD, but annoyance, just that they're building them all over the place and there's no actual rhyme or reason or pattern to it. Uh, they do actually increase beauty, which is a good thing, but I do knock most of them down until, until a few episodes in the future, you'll see I actually use them to make a very fancy room. Anyway, we'll come back to the gold cube as it progresses throughout the series. Uh, for now, though, we're going to get these cultivators up and running. And all you need to do is tell them to create a grow zone, like so. And then say, what do you want that grow zone to be? Corn. Uh, I think I changed my mind here, actually, because I like them to be side by side as opposed to up and down of each other. But again, I, I have these really annoying habits of doing things a certain way. I can't help it. I'm sorry. Um, and then obviously growing the various different things. Devil Strand. It will give you warnings to say that nobody has the skill. Because technically none of my colonists do. However, it doesn't matter because the robots, the drones, are going to do it for me. And there they go. So as it says, each each cultivator has two drones. And out they go. Planting and clearing what they need to do. And then when that crop is grown, they will of course harvest it. Drop it on the floor and replant the next one. And rinse and repeat. And you just leave them alone to do that. You really don't need to bother with them ever again. As long as you've got somebody going to collect that. Uh, or collect the goods, should I say. Um, you should be okay. Poor Refugees Quest, I'm going to uh, accept. Just to get a bit of help to help build the base. Uh, I'm only showing this because obviously the next wave we're going to have a lot of extra people. And it would make no sense. Like one of the episodes where I said nothing happened and lost everybody but one person. So yeah, apologies for that. And this is, this is why I'm just explaining it. Just going to chuck down some really crap beds in the rooms that we have left over. I built those in case of expansion but not needed them. So chucking those down will allow some of those people to be able to sleep. We have a nursery as well for any babies that are born. Um, I wasn't really thinking about it and didn't really pay attention to the babies. But it's a cool idea. 
uh, and that's why obviously members are named uh, into the babies any babies that come after that there will be just whatever they are standardly named in the game okay so we're in wave 45 now which is the boss wave and it is a scatter wave so that means they've just landed absolutely sodding everywhere now this is probably one of the hardest variants because your or at least my guys aren't kitted out to be fighting like this um, and we have the advantage of the additional people with us, which is a good thing. Um, but we are designed to use the kill box. And of course, the kill box doesn't get to any of these people. So we are going to have to manually use our colonists, whatever we have, and travel around wherever they've landed that is not going to funnel them through the kill box. Any of them landing outside of our base should still uh, navigate that way as you can see them all closing in there into the kill box as it stands um, and we should be okay these waves are difficult and they get more difficult as you go on especially with the amount of people that will be eventually dropped when you've got sort of 600 people being dropped you can imagine a good 50 of them will be in your base and that is just not something that you want to contend with you can see there is a huge amount of toxic gas being released there. But I think we've got that under control mostly. There's one in there in our temple trashing our fancy relic thing. There we go. We can get in there and give him a smash in the face. Take that, you knob. Anyway, um, yeah, so they are the most complex ones I've seen so far. Obviously, that toxic gas isn't great, but it... Doesn't, it takes a while to affect them, so I'm just going to leave them there just to work this guy out. But you can see just by how strong they are, this one person against five shouldn't be that difficult. But it is because of how the settings are. And then, of course, standard back to your kill box where you'll find in there you go. They are going to flee. Uh, cash, food, armor, more cash. Of course, the higher the level, the more cash you would get. Remember, though, just accepting cash all the time will make it harder in the future. Because, of course, the higher your wealth, the more it will send you away. So we took the armor. Not great, but it will do. It will do. Now our people can basically reset and get into the hospital and do what they need to do. Luckily, we've got all of them extra people that will help clear up the mess, fix all the buildings, do all the repairing. You can see them there all running off the map. Still within range of a lot of the turrets, though, so it does suck to be them. Jumping to the end of uh, wave 46, nothing really eventful too much in terms of the wave, but on this left-hand side now, I am building a bit of a sorting room. On the top left of the kill box, just underneath there where the sniper lines are, you can see that yellow square. That is a puller, and it will automatically pull the goods out of a storage area, stockpile, which I have made the entire kill box a stockpile. So as things are killed, it will get pulled and pushed into this room here, which you can see there are goods all over the floor, uh, tools, plasteel, weapons, etc., and then what I'm going to do is these two rooms that I'm now building, one of them will be for goods, one of them will be for weapons and armors, and it will start separating them. So as we're fighting, it will, of course, uncover that. Now, the insects that have appeared in the top uh, have uncovered a ancient danger. So we do really need to deal with that. Now, I have still a lot of people because of those uh, refugees that have come in for, I think it was 12 or 15 days. Um, so we'll use them and the easiest way to do that is to put them all along there as you've just seen me set and then I'll send one person in open up the wall to make a bottleneck and then as they come through they should hopefully get mowed down if not I can kite them by running away uh, it should work the weapons we've got are okay we do have some of the hellfire weapons which do the flamethrowers which are actually very very good against insects because insects hate fire and so do vampires and sanguifages but yeah so opening that one slot now that person needs to move because yeah uh, yeah friendly fire is a thing definitely a thing yes you can mod it away but i'm not going to do that um 
So as they come through that gap, you can see they get annihilated. Now, the guys that come out of the caskets and then the insects are two separate enemies. Uh, the insects aren't technically anything to do with the Asian danger. They are because of the insects that are behind it. But all of them are pulled because they're all getting shot at through that gap. So you can see I'm just getting the flamethrowers ready in order to wait for the insects to come. And then we can go hot stuff, hot stuff. There's one. That got them smaller ones wiped out instantly. Very powerful flamethrower for them guns. And of course that insect is, again is wiped out. We have... You get two shots per gun. So we have four in total. We're just using that to wipe out as many of these little bugs as possible to try and stop us having to deal with melee range because insects at melee range are quite strong and we don't really have good armor for dealing with that sharp damage. Again, when they get clustered like this as well, your ranged will be shooting at them, but they're likely to shoot your people over the actual insects, which nobody wants, right? But yeah, I think we are happy to move forward. We are going to uncover this ancient danger. There's never really anything useful in these. I don't know about it. There's a couple of the, the tech prints, but... The rest of it is just going to be dismantled and the resources put into my storage and we'll go from there. I only cleared it out. It, I wouldn't have bothered if I didn't know it was there. But we are over time, so I am going to end the episode here. Thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, please hit like and comment. It's welcome. As always, don't forget to subscribe to see more. Again, thank you for watching. Take care. Goodbye.